Yes, may I help you, sir? Hi, my name is Detective Ed Levinson. I was sent here from the local sheriff's department. I was sent to investigate the case. Is Miss Olivia Walters home? Yes, I am she. Come in. Wonderful. Would you like any refreshments to your coffee? Uh, just black is fine. Thank you. Now, Miss Walters, I'm going to begin with asking you to recall the events leading up to the disappearing of your younger brother, Daniel. Well, first off, I'd say everything began about two years ago when my father suddenly passed away from a heart attack followed by a stroke. Tony Walters, an intellectual and well-known businessman, deceased on September 10, 1997, predeceased by my mother, Kathy Walters, who died in a plane crash shortly after Daniel was born. My father was a great man and a father who cared for Daniel and I, along with heading a wealthy company in downtown Toronto. When he passed, I became the legal guardian of Daniel and we relocated to this quaint, quiet town in the country. In my opinion, I think this place has a lot of character, and I fell in love with the secluded atmosphere. Was there a particular reason for leaving the city? After my father's passing, I, I just wanted to get away from it all. The city lights, the noise, the commotion of the city life, and all the people. Yet some days I just can't seem to get away from it all. Once we moved, it took some time adjusting to the new atmosphere. There were some nights when the doors would slam and shut on its own. Books would fall off the shelves. Everything had an explanation to it, such as the wind or the slanted shelf, but everything was still so foreign and unknown. Did you uh, receive any background information on the house from the previous owners or the neighbors? My father's lawyer found the house for us, and it was immediately purchased within a couple of weeks of my father's death. As for the neighbor, Daniel and I have discovered that he's not the most amicable person. Do you have any information on Daniel Walters? Oh, that little brat, the one that always plays on my lawn and causes a ruckus? That boy is trouble. You seem to have a lot of great memories of your parents. The memories I have with them is what keeps me going. When my mother passed, my father took some time off to spend with Daniel and I. He really cared and loved us. This time around, I'm having a particularly harder time coping with the situation. I've always missed my mother, but now I mourn my father, along with the tough responsibility in having to care for Daniel. <laughs> and now he's gone. Miss Walters, please do not lose sight of hope. We'll find your brother. And then there was one night when I thought I lost it all. You can only handle so much until it becomes too much. Roger Bates was released from jail on bail this past Wednesday. He was imprisoned due to a lawsuit, failure of confidentiality, and refusal of paying fines. 
He attempted to market a business idea of the late Mr. Tony Walters to a competing business, but he was unsuccessful. Details to follow. Mr. Bates was formerly my father's business partner for many years. I have to admit, the article took me by surprise. Another night, when I was lying in bed, I thought I heard Daniel scream. I got a gut-wrenching feeling of what if I lost Daniel too. He's all I have left. I ran to his room, but he was fast asleep. I became more paranoid after that night. Sometimes I could hear footsteps outside. Do you have any further information about the Walters that may be drawn to my attention? I'm not sure if you've noticed, but that family is quite wealthy. I've heard that some say they're after the money, or some say they're after her. If it was me, I'd be after the money, but that's just what I've heard. Now, can you describe the events of the night of the 15th of March? Well, that day, Daniel did not return home from school. I called the school and I was told that he was absent all day. That's when worry struck and my worst nightmare became a reality. Next, I called the police and filed a missing persons report. Yes, hello, I'm calling to file a missing persons report. My brother Daniel Walters is missing. He was last seen this morning before school. He's 10 years old, 4 foot 11, and 120 pounds with dark brown hair. He was last seen wearing a black shirt, a yellow backpack, and jeans. Yes, my address is 65 Principal Street, Eastbrook. Okay, thanks. And now, I wait. And this is where it ends, I guess. Um collected the information to further investigate this case and I'll be in touch with you shortly when I have more information. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. I'm just going to answer that. It could be important. Yes, hello? Yes, it is. Do you realize what you're doing? You're giving in and letting him win. You can't do this. Do you have any other suggestions then? Call the police and tell them to wait at the church for Mr. Bates. They'll arrest him when he gets there. Where is she? What's taking her so long? You gotta be kidding me. I'm so happy to see you. Don't you ever leave again. Here's a question. Where have you been all this time? Tuesday morning as I was leaving to go to school, I heard a dog barking. I followed the noise and then a scary man took me away in his van. You know, it wasn't very smart of you to do that. Daniel, what have I told you? Never talk to strangers. All that matters is that you're back home safely now.
Good morning, this is Leanne Higgins reporting for your breaking news this March 18, 1999. Last night, Roger Beats was arrested for kidnapping Daniel Walters, son of Beats' former business partner and the late Tony Walters. Daniel went missing the morning of the 15th and was reported missing that afternoon by his sister, Olivia Walters. Bates was previously released from jail earlier this month due to a lawsuit issued by Mr. Walters. Investigation is still underway, but officials say that Bates was after revenge. Bates will appear in court later this week and will likely face 10 years in prison. Stay tuned.